So I, I got on my mission. I went and got into Korea around 2007. And so the Korea Seoul West mission had been around, I don't know when it was started, but it had been around for a long time. And basically the boundaries of the Korea Seoul West mission is south of the Han River. Um, and then it kind of borders, goes down to the, it's most of like Seoul. It's all the city. You got Incheon, Kimpo, and Seoul. And that's like it. So it's really one of the smaller geographical size missions. Um, but every mission, like every mission area had like millions and millions of people. Like my smallest, the most rural area when I served in Kimpo, which is like the country, had like 400,000 people just in like just the city area, you know? So it was just like huge, huge, lots of people. But, um, I don't know. So the, the Korea Solis mission about 2010 was dissolved and they just had the Seoul mission, Taejeon and Pusan. But, um, and then, uh, cause they can basically combine Seoul West with Seoul. And then a couple years later, they reopened it. I am not sure on the total boundaries for it right now, but they had, Pretty much Seoul, I think, is about the same. I think it cuts off the Han River. And then everything south of the Han River, I think it's pretty much the same boundaries. But do they call it Seoul South now? So it's the Seoul South mission, which makes more sense because it's, it is south of the Han River, you know? Seoul West is like, it wasn't really West. So the church has kind of always grown steadily. Korea is like the Bible Belt of Asia. It is very, very Christian. And so the craziest thing is, is like, like at night, you can get up on your rooftop if you, you know, are living in a big apartment building. You can look down and just like in your view, you can see probably count like 30 to 60 crosses. I mean, it's just the neon crosses everywhere. I mean, my first apartment was, there was a bar at the bottom and then there was a church and then our apartment. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, anyway, there's churches everywhere. And so the church, I mean, Christianity is very well established. I mean, Buddhism is very small. And then Confucianism is kind of, everyone is, their culture is Confucius more than that's actually being a religion. Um, and then there's like a minority of Buddhism that's, that's there. But yeah, so it's like everyone is Christian. And so that's, that's one cool thing. At least everyone knows about Jesus Christ and they know kind of about God. You know, they may or may not have prayed or, you know, they probably go to church like once a year. Or if they go to church, it's more like going to a rock concert than to church. So um, it kind of, you know, we bring a different, different case into it. So, one, I mean, some of the challenges, I mean, the, the church in Korea has kind of steadily grown. Um, cause you know, Koreans are great people. Uh, they have great faith. I think they're of the tribe of Ephraim, most of them. And so, you know, that's steadily grown. One problem that a lot of Koreans have is in Korea, they're such a social people. Like they have this hierarchy thing. I mean, it's embedded in their language. It's like the way you talk to people is, it's like, if you're talking to a kid, you use a different form of language. If you're talking to your grandpa, you use very honorific form of language. And so their whole society is built like that. And so a lot of times after work, they'll have these, it's like you work all day and then you have to go out to dinner with your boss and all your colleagues, you know? And if you don't drink, it's like, it's huge pressure to drink. It's like, you're almost insulting your boss, which is bad. Um, and so for the church members there, there's with how social Korea is and there's so much like kind of peer pressure that it makes it a little bit harder for Koreans um, to not necessarily to accept the gospel, but to stay in the gospel because they just, I mean, it's like they're getting pounded. So a lot of families in Korea, a lot of good families I know that they actually get baptized. They're in the church for like a year or two. And then they moved to America or Canada or something, which is really sad because anyway, because then the church doesn't grow as much in Korea. But I know the, the apostles and the general authorities have told a lot of Korean families to stay in Korea.
because because then it helps it to grow. So there's tons of less actives in each ward. I mean, I'm sure it's similar around the world, but um, I know we'd have just a list of less actives. And so when I go serve in an area, instead of just like going to visit a member and then going door knocking and doing all those other things, I would try to like maximize my efforts. So I'd find all the less actives in that area around the member, you know, visit the member, visit all the less actives, and then do any proselyting or anything else in that area. And so I try to like maximize our efficiency. And so if I could do anything over again, I would have bought a GPS and taken it with me. I don't know if like cell phones that they have now have GPSs on them or if like your iPad has a GPS on it, but I just remember spending out, wasting hours trying to find these addresses. And then I would, I would seriously, I'd have, when I get into a ward, I'd have them print out the ward list and I would just start like, I would go visit everyone and just like cross off like they don't live there anymore. They don't live there anymore. Like, oh, they do live there, and but they don't want to talk to us. Or, you know, I just kind of, I'd kind of just try to find everyone I could because there is a lot of less actives because like from that social pressure that all Koreans kind of face from living the gospel, um, there is a lot of less actives. And so, um, yeah, if you had a GPS, that would be super nice. <laughs> so my first area was... Um, well, was Incheon was the city, which is like huge. And I served in Gaesandong. Um, it's kind of in the middle of Incheon. Incheon's like where the airport is. It's kind of like a big island. Not really an island, but it's like a big chunk off, off of Seoul. It's right next to Seoul. And so I served in actually Incheon most of my mission, or right around there. So Incheon, uh, Gaesandong was my first area. And then my second area was Kimpo, which is right above um, Incheon. And it's just kind of like, that's that country area where it's like, there's a big city, but then it's just like fields, you know, all the, the rice fields and just, just very country. And so that was, that was a super fun area. The church in that area was pretty small, like the ward, like everyone, it, everyone that was like an active member was the bishop at one time. So it was like, who, who's going to be the bishop next? <laughs> but uh, it was a great place to serve. I served there for, I think it was like five transfers. So I was there for like the majority of my mission, um, at least the longest area. And then from there, I moved to Shilim, which is like probably one of the most smaller, densely populated areas. It's like downtown, heart of Seoul, like huge. And uh, that was a great place to be. Um, and then from there, I went to, I went back to um, Bonghua. I became the zone leader of the Incheon uh, missionaries. Because uh, anyway, so Bonghua was like, it's funny because Bonghua is like next to Gaesan, it's next to Kimpo, and, and it's in Incheon. So anyway, then I served there, it was great. Um, and then after that, I went to Yangdempo, and Yangdempo is where actually where I finished out my mission. And uh, the great thing, actually the cool thing about Yangdempo is they built one of the biggest church buildings they have in Asia right now. I don't, I don't know if it still is, but on my mission in 2009, I think they built it in 2008. It was like the largest LDS building in Asia, and this thing is like huge. And so that was really cool. And that was like my ward building. And so a lot of times we just try to pull people off the street and like take them on tours because they have all these like posters set up. And so we could kind of teach them the lessons as we walk through the building. It was like a huge gym, huge chapel, tons of classrooms, like multi-story building. Um, but that was like, that was a really cool thing. That's where they would have like, when the general authorities would come, that's where they have the big conferences in, in Seoul.